You can see the data table for the lab we just did with mask and theta. You can also see a blank analysis table that we need to complete from our data table. It has normal force in it and maximum force of static friction. We know that we're going to find the normal force by multiplying mg cosine theta. Now, how do we enter that into our Google Sheets in order for Google Sheets to do the calculation for us? Well, we always start off with equals. That's, that's how you enter a formula always. Equals and then whatever you're trying to do. So in this case, it's going to be equals. Well, let's use some brackets. Be liberal with brackets. Equals cell A4 because it's column A, row 4 that I want to uh, convert to uh, normal force here. That's my mass in grams. I got to convert that to kilograms first. So let's divide that by 1,000. You can see that it tells me what the number is, what the answer is as I go. That answer changes because as I add uh, functions to it, obviously I'm going to get a different answer. So 2.25 is the answer of 225 grams converted to kilograms. Sorry, 0 0.225. Let's end that bracket. Now I've got kilograms, but I need to multiply those kilograms by 9.81. Tells me that the force of gravity here is 2.20725. That's mass in kilograms times 9.81. But now I want to multiply that by cosine theta. So I'm going to enter the cosine function. But remember that Google Sheets expects you to use radians. We have degrees. You can either calculate uh, 25 degrees, 21.1 degrees, and so on in radians, or you can have Google Sheets do that for you. So inside the cosine bracket, I'm going to actually type in the word radians. And then I'm going to enter cell B2, uh, sorry, B4. What that's going to do is convert 25 degrees into radians and then take the cosine function of that uh, degrees. So here's what I have. A4 divided by 1,000 converts it to kilograms, multiply it by 9.81, gets it to newtons, and then I multiply it by cosine theta, but this radians B4 inside the brackets for cosine converts it to radians for me. That's going to give me 2.00. That's my normal force. Now I'm going to do essentially the same thing for max force of static friction, except this time it's going to be brackets cell A4 divide it by 1,000, once again converting it to kilograms, multiply it by 9.81, there's my force of gravity. This time, instead of cosine theta, it's sine. But again, it wants us to use radians, so we have to convert it to radians. Let's type in the word radians, highlight the cell that I want to convert, end the bracket for radians, end the bracket for the sine function, press enter. Now, that's not particularly quick, that's probably no quicker than doing it on a calculator, but when you highlight both of those boxes and then click on this little solid square in the bottom right-hand corner and then drag it down, that is quicker. Now we have all of our normal forces and all of our max force of static friction. You can see that if I click on this one, it's using cell A4, cell B4. If I click on this one, it's using cell A13 and B13 it automatically makes that transition for you. Now, you've got to plot this, right? You guys know how to plot this already, right? Highlight your data. Do not highlight your headings. Just highlight your data. Insert your chart. Your chart type is going to be a scatter plot. And you can see that that graph is going to be very, very close, actually, to a straight line other than two points right here that look a little wonky. We're not going to delete those points. We have deleted points before when we've had a good reason. The only reason we'd have here is that they're a little bit wonky, but no good reason to know why they're wonky. So we're going to leave those in there. That's okay. That doesn't mess things up anyways. We plot a line of S fit here. We're going to get a nice, a nice line of S fit for this, or a nice trend line. And we're going to get a pretty good slope once we actually do that.